Good morning and welcome to the Bill and Kelly Show. Our guest today is author Susan Perry, and uh, yeah. she's uh, with us today to talk about um, how she came to be an author and, and actually where she's from. So Susan, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself and where you're from Good and morning. how you came. Nice to be on your show. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank, thank you for you. being our guest. We appreciate this. So uh, tell us a bit about yourself and uh, where you're from and how you came to be in Highland because you are a resident of Highland now. I've been a resident of Highland since 2012. So it's eight years in May that I will be here. Um, I moved down from Illinois. I lived in McChesney Park, which is almost to the Wisconsin border. Yeah. Had a son living down here and they got tired of traveling that distance. So decided it would be easier if I moved down here and was closer to them. So um, that's that's my main reason for moving down to Highland. Hmm. Um, I started writing basically uh, six years ago. I'm retired and I was bored. And I decided to give it a try. So a couple of years before that, I actually wrote a book um called blueberries and bears in my brother's shoes and i just wrote it for the family and a few close friends because basically when my father passed away i found out that i did not know very much about his life before children so it was a story about him and and growing up in the 40s and 50s and so on and so forth but what i realized when i finished it is that basically it had been therapy and I had gotten a lot of out of my system when I wrote it down. Mm. So that kind of got put on the side. A few people that wrote it said, you ought to try a book. So I did. And my first book was called Crossing Sydney. And it got some pretty good reviews. And a lot of the people were shocked by the ending because I like to I like to end my books with unsuspected endings, so to speak. Ooh. So my books are all mysteries except for two. I rewrote last year, Blueberries and Bears in My Brother's Shoes, updated it, got rid of the junk, uh, took out a lot of stuff that went past my graduation from high school, and we did the whole thing. And... Uh, it, it, it's a fun book. It really is. I think parents would enjoy reading it to their kids or kids, teenagers, because it basically tells what it was like growing up in the 40s and 50s in a small town in Wisconsin. And if I had my chance, I'd go back, walk through those doors of high school and start all over again because I loved it. Yeah. So that that's one book that isn't a mystery. Uh, the other book that isn't a mystery is a three-chapter short story called Red, White, and Blue. Um, it hasn't gotten a lot of reviews, but the reviews that it has received have been very, very good. Nice. So I've kind of poured my heart in the last six years into just writing. And so I would say basically I have 14 books and one short story. Hmm. And people say, you know, how can you write so many books in such a short period of time? Well, the process is a little unusual. So do you have any questions? I'm talking. I don't talk as much usually. Oh, so. now, now, now you're, you're doing great. You're doing great. Uh, so you said, how many books do you have? 14? I have 14 books in one short story. In one short story. Amazing. In one short story. So, uh, gosh, you know, I've always amazed by authors because I, I've been tempted myself, but I, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. It just, it seems to be... Um, kind of a, a task you really have to be concentrated in. And, uh, and so talk, talk about that. You know, when you became an author, your first book, um, you know, what kind of inspired you uh, to keep... Right, your, especially to be a mystery writer. Right, to like be a mystery what, writer. What makes that... I have, yeah, I have read thousands and thousands of books. And I always lean towards the mysteries, the courtroom dramas and that type of thing. I'm not one that goes for the la dee la dee love stories, you know, yeah. and the bare-chested guy on the cover. <laughs> so I, I guess because I've written or, or read so many mysteries, I, I kind of tend to go that direction. Right. The first book, I don't know, I guess I was just thinking about one day back home when I was like 12 years old and an incident happened where I hit I hit a kid in the head with a baseball bat. 
<laughs> I didn't kill him. I didn't kill him. But in the book, I do. <laughs> oh, okay. So it kind of started, but that, right. that book was also my biggest challenge. Because it's not until the ending that everybody sits back and says, oh, my God, I never saw that coming. Ooh. So that it's probably the worst written, most poorly written as far as language and sentence and all that kind of stuff. But uh-huh. it's also still my favorite yeah. because it still shocks the heck out of people when they read it. So you Ooh, went God, all. I'm so going to have to definitely read that one. <laughs> yeah. So in the book, you went all El Capone on something. <laughs> it's just totally different. Um it's very hard to write a book and not use a male or female pronoun. Hmm. If you get my drift. Got yeah. it. Okay. All right. So that, that it's very difficult to do that. So my first one was kind of a bit of a challenge. After that, I was talking to a friend and she, we were just joking around and, and somebody made the comment her eye about not smothering your mother. <laughs> We have strange conversations, my friend. Not so smothering then the your name mother, of the next goodness. book was Don't Smother Your Mother. <laughs> and and that took off and that became a three book series, not actually in a row. There was books in between. But each book is a standalone book. But also, I mean, if you haven't read the first one or two, you can read the other one and still get a story out of it without being sure. confused. Hmm. So that that's about a, a I sheriff down in Branson, Missouri, because I lived in Branson, Missouri for a while. I love it down there, too. <laughs> yeah. So I built a house and I moved down there, actually, after I retired. Um, so I did live down there in the Hollister, Branson area for a while. And the other books just come. It can be a comment. It can be a picture. It can be anything. But I don't go looking for my books. All of a sudden, like they hit you over the head with a baseball bat, huh? <laughs> yes, you're exactly right. Because I can be doing absolutely nothing, and all of a sudden, I have people in my head, and they're talking. And all I, I have do that too, is... but I never make a point. <laughs> <out of it. laughs> yeah, yeah fact, basically, all I do is just write down what they're I, saying. I tell you what, I have no idea great. when I start the book how it's going to end. I have no idea who the characters are going to be. I don't know where it's going to go from one chapter to the next. And like I told some people at a meeting one day, I get really excited towards the end of the book so I can find out how it's going to end. That's because amazing I find it, to me. Yeah, I love so it. It, it's really weird. And I finished my last book, excuse me, in Jan. Jan No, I'm sorry. It was March. I finished a book in March. This is the end oh, of wow. April. I had a look at a calendar there. I've been very concerned because nothing's nobody's come to visit me for the last couple of months. And I've been, okay, this is what they call writer's block, but I don't really look for it anyway. So all of a sudden, two days ago, some people showed up. So I'm on my, ah. I'm on my oh, book. Oh, new book. Yeah. Yay. Uh-huh. And, I, awesome. and my books are that long. They're a couple hundred pages, so it's not tedious reading. They're not complicated as far as terminology is concerned. I don't have a huge vocabulary. I never took words in school <laughs> or thesaurus or whatever you want to call it, because sometimes I read a book and I don't know what I've read because of the wording. But um, it's just kind of like they come in and, and all of a sudden they're done. I finish and they're gone. You know, I hear about that from so many authors. It's kind of like when they're in the midst of the book, they know it's right because it almost writes itself. Uh, the storylines fall in their head. So I hear you saying kind of the same yeah. thing. Wow, that it is amazing because it takes on a life of its own in a way. Um, so your book, and I, I uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I kind of I thought I heard you say that you have like a series, of, you know, like a. A, a reoccurring uh, character that uh, is your main character? Right. It's Sheriff Cow- Cowboy, quote, Berkson. Sure. And he is the main character, basically. He's, he's the, the cop. I always have a main cop in my book. So he's, he's okay. And where is he from? Where is he? He's the one well, who he, he's, he's in Hollister, which is next door to Branson. Right. Okay. 
Uh, right. So, I so mean, he's he got kind of like a southern you know? draw to him, does he? So I'm, I'm sorry, just thinking, of, is he got like kind of a southern draw when he comes up oh, in yeah. your head like Do you this? know who Roy Calhoun is? Yeah. Yes. Do you yeah. remember Roy Calhoun? Oh, yes. Well, in, my head, in my head, that's what he looks like. Uh -huh. Okay. I mean, I I see people in my head with... The, people also say that they wish I was more descriptive of my characters, but I think in my care, everybody's my characters look different to different people. I think. Right. So, like sure. I say, if this looks to me like Rory Calhoun, to somebody else, it may look like somebody else. Yeah. You know. Right. So I don't and really... there's there's a lot to speak about letting the imagination do its own work. You know, not right. finally crafting that character and everyone's imagination will come to right. a different yeah. arrival, arrive at yeah. a different place. So that, that's interesting. I mean, and that's, you know, right, reading a book, that's, that's why people encourage to read. It's just very entertaining because everyone has a different view of what happens. You know, it's like, it reminds they... me a lot of old time radio because yeah. I'm, I'm a huge fan of the old time radio things. I'm in a group that does reenactments of it and that's all I listen to in my car. But it's the same thing because you hear their voices and you automatically kind of assume what they look like based yeah. on that character. And then you see who the actor really was and it looks nothing at all like you would expect. Right. Yeah. So I same. love the fact that you get to use your imagination and just well play the whole thing in your head. In the series, the mother has three sons and she kicked her husband out a long time ago. So it's a story about a mother and three sons living in a trailer down in, in Hollister, Missouri. Mm -hmm. And what happens to them throughout, you know, and no, sometimes the bad guy doesn't get caught. Sometimes the bad guy really did a good thing and gets away. So you never, if, when you read my books, you're not, you're not going to find out who always did it. There'd be a hint who did it, but that doesn't mean that he necessarily got caught. Mm. To draw your own conclusion. Yeah, right. I love my grandson, yeah, my grandson's my grandma, everybody has their own imaginations and that's the way to leave it. If they don't like it, then they haven't got the insight to look and to go further into it. Right. Yeah. If fun. the book ever become one of my biggest fans, by if the way. book ever oh, wow, best. my my sons <laughs> and my grandsons. <laughs> Okay. As I say, if the book ever becomes a movie, uh, please tell the director that you know someone could play Southern characters, right, Kelly? Do you sure. have uh, we, we can definitely do that right there, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You need a sheriff. Southern now, you sheriff, could probably be that. the sheriff. Yeah, I played a sheriff <laughs> a before for five here. minutes. A whole five minutes I played a sheriff. Mm. Yeah. yeah, you did. It's a very short with production. My, with my sheriff, you'd have to have more gray. Oh, I've got gray. Your the, the video like is <laughs> it's falling out. I have I used to have a lot of gray, <laughs> but it's now falling out. You can tell by my beard. It's yeah, that's yeah, yeah. That top is starting to fall out. That's why it looks black. <laughs> but it's what little hair I have left. <laughs> so no, uh, but well, what, women lose theirs too. Yeah, it, it's. <laughs> I'm right uh, there with you. <laughs> So hats are all about. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know, what did you do before you became an author? What did you retire from? Well, most of my life, my working life, I was an accountant. And the last two years before I retired, I ran two Curves Fitness for Women places. Oh, okay, yeah. In, in Illinois. And uh, then I re decided to retire and I, I went down to Branson, which I had been down there a number of times and I loved it down there. And I found a builder who was building a development, and I picked out a house and had him build it, and I moved down down there. So basically, I was an accountant most of my life. Yeah, okay. numbers. Now, when numbers. you were down in Branson, did you ever go over the border to Eureka Springs, Arkansas? I was an American number. Yeah, I did. My neighbor and I did, I believe, if I remember. Eureka correctly. Springs. Do you need to write a story about that place? Because that place is amazing, too. That would be a great place to set a mystery. Do you know there's a there's a book in every town? And I do believe that there's a book in every person. That everybody has a story to tell one way or the other. Yeah. Um, yeah. The one story, of course, Blueberries and Bears in My Brother's Shoes is about me. So it's kind of a 
semi-autobiography. It, it says a mostly true story because some of it is thrown in there. But um, the town that I came from went to high school, uh, Columbus, Wisconsin. Yay, Columbus Cardinals. Uh, I've written a number of books with, the, with Columbus as the background, the setting. And uh, one is called My Mayor, The Mayor's Son. And it does kind of hit home because quite a few of the characters were recognized, even though they had different names. Uh -huh. <laughs> and the house on Ludington Street, which is basically the house that I grew up in, which is a big, beautiful Queen Victorian house. Oh, in, in gorgeous. Columbus. So in my book, the house has ghosts. Um, it goes back a ways. So. But yeah, so I, I do have uh, settings, and usually the settings are places that I have lived. I have one out in Montana because I lived in Kalispell, Montana. Um, I lived out in the state of Washington for a while, but I haven't written a book with that as the setting yet. But hmm. it just, you know, whatever I feel like, whatever, the, I, I, the one I just started, I think that's going to have Columbus as its background also. Uh, it's going to be called The Box House. Mm. Oh, I'm excited to hear that. Reason for that yeah. Because there was a house think... there that was tall and it was square, but it was tall. It had like four stories. Oh, wow. And it over and people couldn't figure it out. Well, they had, as I understand it, there was a mink farm or a fox farm or a rabbit farm. But anyway, they used it as a lookout for something. So my imagination is going a little wild on this one. Yeah. Nice. Sounds... It might become all three at one time because yeah. the house, in my mind, was built around the 1900s, so it's had some history. I'll bet it does. Well, it sounds like you have an amazing imagination. But, you know, well, I've already you... killed off one person in this house. Oh, I'm only oh, on gosh. chapter two. So. Ooh, <laughs> I love oh, I it. Yeah, Kelly is the murder mystery queen reader. Uh, she... I love that stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. She... Oh, well, give mine a try if you get a chance. You know, I will, I mean... definitely. In fact, yeah, we so... had the FBI agent on our show that broke the Black Widow um, serial killer serial killer case oh, really? and well, um, so after uh, during the interview i asked him i said do you really think i have something to worry about with kelly and he looked at me and said oh most definitely <laughs> so i'm i every day i'm scared <laughs> you poor thing no i do you, she, have, do being, you lock her in at night Phil? Uh, no no oh gosh <laughs> Because then my fear would even escalate more. It's kind of like a caged That's animal. True. Yeah, so no, no. Right. You know, to wake up and, and she binge watches all the murder mysteries and, and the forensic files. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I you know, I fall asleep and wake up to some really... <laughs> Well, really honey, you know what they things. say, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. So You are, you are right. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> Yeah. So, so anyway, um, besides that, I mean, a little bit myself, I, I was married, didn't like it. Um, I have three sons who are now almost as old as their mother. And, Isn't that weird how that works? They're getting older. I'm getting younger. Exactly. Really. I mean, exactly. I have a son that's you know, just turned 60, and, and I'm thinking, well, he's 61. I've got two more just about there. And I think, how did that happen? Because exactly. you're old enough to have children that old. My you kids know? are now <laughs> older than me. I think that's <laughs> Yeah, mine are getting there, I'm telling you. But, but it's cute, too, because the one boy said the other day, Mom, he says, I know how old you are. He says, but in my head, you're still in your 50s. So they don't think of me as an old lady either. Of course not. So. Yeah. Boy, this has been great. I tell you, so. so um, how do people yeah. find these books? How do you how do you order them or get them? Well, you can just go on Amazon, type in my name, type in the name of the book. Everything will come up. Uh, they're available in paperback or, and uh, the ebooks for kindles and, and readers and awesome so. and, and can people bags. order them through like independent bookstores or places like that too i'm sure they can well you know i think i don't really know what amazon exactly does but i know that there's other distributors that have my books for sale okay i put them on amazon because somehow amazon gets them out like i've seen my books available on walmart 
website. Oh. And I didn't post it there, so they're going through the Amazon thing to get the books. Okay, cool. Yeah, a lot All right. Of yeah, a lot of independent bookstore. Type orders. my name in, and then my website will come up. My books will come up, and um, we'll put that and we'll put that information up so everybody knows where to go, so they know what to look for. I appreciate that. Thank you. The, the last book is the the. You, can you you can't you can see me. Right. Yes, absolutely. If you hold up the can book. You see that? Yeah. Hold yeah. The book yeah. Up. Just hold it up a little bit more. A little bit. There you go. The proof is in the pudding. Yes, but you Let see the word proof? proof? Yep. <laughs> you see what's scratched I out? I love yep. it. Yes. The poop. The... Ah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds so like... That kinda, this one kind of takes two separate murders and they're not at all connected with each other. And then all of a sudden they become intertwined. Oh. So, yeah. Well, I have a feeling that I you... Love um, that's the latest one. Yeah, you, you've just made it on Kelly Rosala reading list. Absolutely. Oh, great. It's, it's kind of like right up there with... It takes, Kelly, if you're a fast reader. Yeah. Well, it's kind of up there with Oprah's reading list, but it, it has a whole different dimension than Oprah's reading list. Right, Kelly? Yeah. Mine, mine all have a little bit of a darker theme to them, oh, I'm sure. extremely dark. Yeah. And I'm waiting <laughs> for this dark. pandemic to be over so that when I get my copies of my books, I can come and get them signed by the author, Missy. Yes. yes well, definitely. I'll tell you what I'll do if you would like. If you will email me your address, I'd be happy to sign you, sign a copy and send it to you. Oh, there you All go, All right, Kelly. I can do that. Which one would you like? You pick which one. Okay. You pick which one you think I need to start with, because I'm going to end up buying all of them. You know that. So okay, I'll, I I think I'm I one of the fa well, of course, it's the favorite from the town I was raised in because it's about Columbus is the house on Huntington mm. Street. I think I'm going to send you Crossing Sydney just for the fact that you have to remember it's not the best written, but you might enjoy it. And then along with that, I'll I'll throw in Red, White, and Blue. Ooh, the short story. Oh, Love cool. it. There you go, Thanks. Kelly. I'm excited. Yeah. And then I'll buy all the rest of them and have you sign them too. Well, I'll sign we'll... them and uh, send me your address and yeah. I'll be happy I will. to send them. Yeah, we'll, I we'll have to see you. Days, I'm not going to the post office that often. But... That's okay. Yeah, we'll have Whenever to see. Whenever I get them, I'll be looking forward to it. We'll have to see. Thank what... you so much, guys. Oh, I appreciate no problem. You. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we appreciate you. Thank you so much. And thank you You're for sharing your talents with the world. Now. Yeah. Oh, and I just click on leave meeting. Yeah. And we'll, yeah, we'll, with that, we'll say goodbye for now. Uh, Susan, thank you very much for being our guest. And we look forward to seeing some of your books and future books. Sounds yeah, like you're an amazing you. writer. So with that, thank, thank we you uh, wish you all a very safe day, and we'll say goodbye for now. Bye, thank everybody. Thank you, you too. Thank you. Bye-bye. This episode of The Bill and Callie Show is brought to you by Sip Coffee House 2 in Highland, Indiana on Jewett Avenue. Great coffee, lattes, smoothies, and more. Food and treats you will adore. Small town charm with big city selection. It's Sip Coffee House 2. If it's breakfast, brunch, or lunch you need, Les Cafe is the place to go, indeed. Open 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. seven days a week. Les Cafe Pancake House, located in Highland, Indiana on Highway Avenue. Les Cafe, where less is more. Promise You Art House, a fun and vibrant place for local artisans to display and sell their creative works, owned and operated by artists for artists. Conveniently located at 8830 Kennedy Avenue in Highland, Indiana. For hours and events, visit pyarthouse.com or follow them on Facebook. Promise You Art House, where creativity reigns.